Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to talk about hydrocarbons, organic compounds, uh, functional groups, all the stuff related to the basics of carbon chemistry here. So what does the word organic mean? It doesn't mean you went to the farmer's market for it. That's a separate meaning. But organic means carbon-based. So organic compounds are typically going to be a whole bunch of carbons that bond, covalently bond to hydrogen and oxygen. So uh, carbon loves to bond with itself, which is why we can get all these amazing carbon skeletons we'll talk about in a moment. Carbon also loves to bind with hydrogen. And when, and when you have a structure that's full of carbon and hydrogens, those are hydrocarbons. But then oxygen likes to get into the mix as well. Um, so you see, the, 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 here you see some carbon skeletons. So carbon loves to bond with itself and loves to bond with hydrogen. And that's where you get these this diverse uh, number of different carbon skeletons. Potentially, um, just using carbon, you could build 250,000 different structures. That's, that's why carbon is, we're carbon-based life forms for a reason. Carbon is so unbelievably versatile because it wants to share four different electrons. And that's what makes it so special. What I love about this picture, you see this car here and you see fuel, right? The food you and I eat and the food your car eats are actually very, very similar. We, so you think about your, your, your car, different types of fuel, right? You, you, they're going to have, uh, if you look at protein as a, fuel, as, as a gas, these kind of things. Hydrocarbon chains can be used for fuels. Well, well, we consume hydrocarbon chains. We consume fats and carbs and these kind of things, and so does your, so does your car. Um, so you, you take a hydrocarbon, and you take oxygen, and you produce energy, carbon dioxide, and heat. So I just think that's kind of amazing that your car and you both run on hydrocarbons in very, very similar ways. All right, so we talked about the basics of carbon skeletons. We talked about what a hydrocarbon is. Um, naming hydrocarbons uh, or, or carbon chains up to 10. Uh, there's one carbon, it's going to be methane. Two would be ethane. Three is propane. Four is butane. Five is pentane. Six is hexane. Seven would be heptane. Eight is octane, like the octane rating in, in this vehicle here or the gas that goes in the vehicle here. Um, nine would be nonane and 10 would be decane. At least that's how I say it, just so, you, just so you see the terms and know how I like to say them at least. Um, okay, so that's going to be just the basics of organic chemistry, meaning carbon-based chemistry, and the carbon skeleton, and what makes carbon so, so versatile. But carbon also likes to bond with functional groups. We've got a long list of functional groups here. We're just going to talk about six of them. Functional groups, they function in chemical reactions as a single unit or a group. Pretty good name for it, right? Functional group. These are, these, they, they're going to function as a group. So there are six functional groups that are critically important in human physiology. First, we have the hydroxyl group, or the OH group. Primarily think alcohols there with the hydroxide group. Second, we have the carbonyl group or the C double bond O group. For carbonyl groups, I generally think of sugars like glucose, which is technically a hexose. So sugars like glucose have carbonyl groups. Then we have the carboxyl group. Now take a look at it there. It's a C double bond O with an OH group. So it's called carboxylic acid on this screen. So it's a carbonyl group plus a hydroxide group, and which is why it's called the carboxyl group. When I think of that, car the carboxyl group or the carboxylic acid group, the first thing that comes to mind is fatty acids having those. Then you have the amino group. What make uh, uh, the, what makes the third one there? The amino group. What makes it special is nitrogen. The am amino group is going to be found in proteins, and we must consume proteins because nitrogen is the fourth fourth most important element in the human body, and the only way we can get it is from getting it from plants. That got it from the soil or eating animals that ate those plants. All right, then we have the methyl group uh, near the bottom there. So methyl group, think DNA methylation is very, very important. Methyl groups are also important in amino acids. And then lastly, near the bottom, we have the phosphate group. That's very important for the sugar phosphate backbone of your nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, and also ATP, our cellular energy source, is adenosine triphosphate. So that's what a functional group is. That's the six critical and critically important functional groups that will be talked about throughout the year. And that's carbon uh, chemistry in general. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.